in today's video, I wanted to do something that I did um, a couple videos ago that was really helpful to a lot of people where I talked about the zig route. And what I want to talk about today are hitch routes. And there's a really specific reason why, but I just, I, I am so excited to share this with you. This is a complete tutorial on hitch routes, everything you need to know about it, everything that, and, and why it matters, why it matters for your offense and what it can help you do. So let's jump right into it. If you've never been to my channel before, my name's Cody. I post videos like this that are designed to, you know, talk about different concepts concepts, different things, and help. Basically, what I try to do is I try to learn as much as I can about the game, and then I try to deliver that material to you in the form of these videos. I also have a full uh, Arizona and Arizona Cardinals slash 46 uh, playbook offensive and defensive um, competitive bundle guide. Uh, and so if you want to pick up that Madden 21 competitors guide, you can pick that up in the description of this video. But we're going to jump right in into this discussion of hitch routes. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is how hitch routes work. We're going to talk about why they matter for your offense. And then we're also going to talk about very specifically, we're going to mess with these zone drops. But for right now, we're going to leave it at the default setting and we are going to just jump right in here. So hitch routes, guys, uh, just so you know, um, hitch routes in Madden are really, 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 really powerful. They're really powerful for two primary reasons. Number one, it provides you a really, really consistent check down read that you can throw quick. You can throw it hot. You can throw it quick. It's going to catch it. It's going to react. But at the same time, it also offers you the opportunity to essentially playmaker this route all over the field, and you can attack different points based on what the defense does. So if you face a zone defense, playmaker and hit routes are really, really, really powerful. Uh, and so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk specifically about it from two specific uh, perspectives. We're going to talk about it from a spread perspective or a, um, a spread out perspective, and we're also going to talk about it from a compression perspective um, um, as, as well, we're going to probably head down to the single back, maybe do some bunch, uh, maybe even do some gun cluster uh, action for you. But we're going to primarily focus in on these hitch routes. So I want to talk specifically about it, first and foremost, from the mesh play, one of my favorite plays in Madden. Uh, and we're going to talk about this real quick. So I'm going to come out and cover two man. Now, first things I want to do is I want to show you how this route works against man-to-man. -man. So we're going to put both of our slots on hitches, and I'm just going to throw them. I'm just going to throw the hitch routes. And what you'll see here is um, what, what you'll see here is I'm going to man align and press, do all that stuff. So like if I wanted to press defense, this is what I would do, right? And I'm just going to throw these hitches. So just throw them, and you see it gets intercepted. So hitch routes are, at, in, at their very core, designed to be man-to-man um, -man beaters, man-to-man -man killers, in my opinion. And Oftentimes, what you want to make sure you do is you'll notice Mercedes Lewis, you'll notice on this play right here, Mercedes Lewis is going to have a completely different experience than Shepard is. Watch his route. See how he kind of shields? I want to show you this real quick. This is a huge, huge, huge point. And this is something that I did not know until studying for this video for you. So if you look on the left side, watch watch his animation. You see here he gets pressed, and he can't get open because he gets pressed. No window to throw this ball. Now over, and that's why we threw a pick on the first play. Mercedes Lewis, watch completely different perspective. Look, doesn't get pressed, posts his player up, and is able to deliver the ball to him. That's a huge deal. That's a huge deal. And I want to tell you that I want to show you why. A lot of it has to do with where they're at on the line of scrimmage. So what you'll see now on the left side of the scrimmage is you're going to get the same thing. You see Shepard now is able to get unbumpable. When hitch routes are ran from someone who is on the line of scrimmage, it is completely different than when they are not on the line of scrimmage. Watch how this plays out. Now you can throw these hitch routes. At the, as soon as they turn around, you can throw them, you know, and, and, and everything with hitches. And I just want to encourage you with this because it took me a lot of work this year to learn these. Everything with hitch routes this year is all timing. So you want to throw right when he comes back to the inside. And what I like to do personally, I like to inside pass lead these. I like to inside pass lead these. Now, the truth um, of hitch routes for you 
is this actually applies to the wide receivers as well. So we're going to come out in the play spread wise slot. It's a play that I really like to call. It's hitch seam. We talk about it in our Madden 21 competitive bundle guide. If you want to pick that up in the description, um, there's a full breakdown on that play specifically. We're going to talk about it um, here. Now watch. You'll see in this play, both wide receivers are on the line of scrimmage. So watch what's going to happen. We're going to be able to throw these little button hooks. And what I want to do as a quarterback, especially if I'm throwing the ball outside of the numbers, meaning if I'm throwing the ball to the outside wide receivers, I want to low ball and pass lead that thing inside. If I don't low ball and I don't pass lead them inside, it will not work. And I would argue, I would honestly argue that if I don't leverage Aaron Rodgers, it also won't work. Now, I also want to show you one of the little quick tip with this. If I were to smart route these routes, you, in theory, think they're going to go 10 yards. Watch what happens if they get pressed. You see you get the same animation. Notice that? That if they get pressed, they're going to give you the same little quick turnaround animation. You'll see right here. Oh, there it is. Devontae Adams wide open. See why that's important? Hopefully right? If they're in man-to-man -man coverage, you you now have a really, really solid opportunity to be able to beat them because this route just works. It's a quick hitch route and it works like crazy, okay? So essentially what we've learned about hitch routes so far is against man-to-man -man coverage, you want to make sure that those hitch routes are being ran from someone that's on the line of scrimmage. You really, really want them to be on the line of scrimmage. If they're not on the line of scrimmage, they're not going to get as open, and oftentimes they're not even going to get open against press man-to-man -man coverage. Now what I want to do is I want to talk about um, I want to talk about two things real quick here with this. So the first one is um, if I were to take if I were to take this left slot here and I were to put him on the line of scrimmage and I were to put him on a smart routed hitch route, watch what happens. So we're in press coverage here. Watch. See how he's going to do the same thing? See that right there? He's going to do the little button hook. Now, what you noticed on the left side, hopefully, is you notice that wide receivers, wide receivers, okay, um, if they are on a stock hitch route, watch what happens. See that right there? He's going to show hands. He's going to settle up noose and show hands. So what that tells me is, right, what that tells me is, essentially, if I take this slot receiver and I put him on the line of scrimmage and I smart route all of these curl routes against man, they're going to oftentimes settle up. Now, if they don't get pressed, they're going to run the duration of the route. So, for example, if I were to shade coverage over top, maybe do something like that. What you'll see is all of these hitch routes will, will go their default depth and they'll still get open. As that was a terrible pass lead, but they'll still they'll still get open. OK, because once people start taking away the press coverage, right, once they take away press coverage, this 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 route really opens up for you, um, because right when he turns back, you can just get the snapback animation. Now, what people are going to do that's going to probably be most beneficial to them is they are going to go to some type of off man man coverage and shade coverage underneath. If they do something like that, um, you're going to see that these hitches um See how, see how he can pick that off? See that right there? That's probably their best solution. Um, and we'll talk about that in a future video about why that's actually a really, really solid way to play defense. But um, what I want to do right now is I just want to show, you know, these specific hitch routes. And as you can see here, uh, even against press coverage, they're going to be able to win against the man-to-man -man coverage. So in theory, um, if as long as your hitch route is on the line of scrimmage, you're going to win. Uh, now, what about 10-yard um, hitch routes versus 5-yard hitch routes? In my personal opinion, I've tested this out. I think that the, the, the default 5-yard or 3-yard hitch route works a lot better than the smart routed 10-yard hitch route uh, against man-to-man -man coverage. You can just quick throw it, easy money against man-to-man. -man. So what we've learned so far, what we've learned so far is, number one, we want to run hitch routes when they're on the line of scrimmage. Number two, number two, we want to um, we want to run hitch routes. Um, we want to we want we want to pass lead them to the inside. And number three, we're about to dive into some zone concepts, but we want to low ball inside them. If we low ball inside them, especially with a 
um, a really, really solid, like an Aaron Rodgers type of quarterback, your your success rate on these are going to go up tremendously. Now, in my personal opinion, these do work a little bit better from the slot than they work to the wide receiver, as you saw. You'll see us throw some picks um, just because of the positioning of the field. However, against certain defenses and certain coverages, it does make sense to run hitch routes on the outside. But for the purpose of this video right now, what we're going to say is we're, we're going to make a shift here. As you see the pick here from James Dean, we're going to make a shift and go exclusively into slot hitch routes to wide receivers that are on the line of scrimmage. And we're going to talk about that as it pertains to the gun cluster formation. All right, guys, so we're going to go to gun clusters from Arizona and you see here, I have that left side receiver. I can put him, so I'm going to just do standard cluster. And we're going to talk specifically about mesh post, mesh, all those different plays. And I can basically do that concept with two different players. So you see here, I can take Devontae Adams and I can put him on a hitch route. And I could take, you know, Lewis here and I, let's just put him on a clear out route if I wanted to, right? Whatever, it doesn't matter. What you're going to see is against press coverage, Devontae Adams is going to just settle up and show his hands real quick. Right there, quick pass lead down, and as you can see, this is going to do a really, really, really good job against the man-to-man -man defense. So we've got man-to-man -man figured out at least a little bit. Now, if, if they were to – let me show you here real quick. So this is cover two man. Let me show you what this looks like if they're not pressed up. Um, I did not want to flip the play. We'll show you here real quick. Let me get that audible back. And do maybe like a zig on the left, on the right, and a quick, quick little hitch on the left. And what you'll see here, still wide open. Devontae Adams still open, still able to get that separation that we want him to get against that coverage. Um, and this is probably the hardest one because of the fact that the running back is going to kind of be in the way a little bit against man. Now what I want to cover is zone. Zone is a lot more fun. Um, zone, these routes work so much better in my opinion. And specifically for playmaking. But what we're going to do is we're going to just show you. This is, I think, cover two. And you see that that vertical hook on the left side kind of hangs with the player. You guys notice that? So I don't, my, my zones are set to default, right? So this is cover two sit, cover two sink out of dime one, four, six, right? Just three yellows. Uh, and what you're going to see here, the yellow zone should sit. See that right there? See how the yellow zone sits underneath him? Now, the reason that that is important is cover two is the only defense that that happens. So hook curls don't do this. You have to have vertical hooks. If you have hook curls, they're not going to sit underneath. Look. There's a hook curl, and it doesn't sit underneath. That's dime four, one, four, six, cover three. Hook curls will not defend it. They have to be in a cover two defense, or at least some semblance of a cover two defense, to be able to defend this. So if I'm in cover four, and I got two hook curls, what you'll notice on this right here is I can throw this ball very, very easily against his own coverage. This is what makes hitch routes, hitch, hitch routes so powerful. They have to have a very specific, they have to have two vertical hooks on every play. The problem with vertical hooks, though, is vertical hooks can easily get manipulated in this game. Um, vertical hooks are, are one of the worst zones for defending the middle of the field. And so you're going to be able to run post routes in behind this, and it's going to work really, really well. So let me show you this real quick, something like this. Now, I do want to show you one other concept real quick, and this is what makes the hitch route so good. A lot of, a lot of route combinations this year will, will basically, what will happen is we'll send everybody out on a route, and we'll send them deep. We'll put them on a wheel route or a streak route or a crossing route or a slant route, all those types of routes. The hitch route is going to sit at three to four yards, right? So it's just going to come set up, sit. Now, against this, I can then playmaker it wherever I want. And the way you playmaker is by flicking the right stick. So if I flick the right stick to the right, or if I flick the right stick to the left, it doesn't matter, right? Wherever I want the receiver to go on that hitch route, that's where he's going to go. So we'll show you this here. Uh, i got to throw it away because I forgot to put him on the hitch route. We'll show you this, how it, how it really makes a difference against zone coverage. So against zone coverage, right what you're going to see here is something like this if i have a setup like this right here you know maybe i'm even maybe i'm even blocking the running back right who's to say i'm not blocking the running back so we'll just we'll just max protect you know just something simple um something simple like this oh i forgot about that you can't really get this motion the same 
So we'll just do something like this. Very, very simple. A little cover three beater out of the mesh. And what will happen is they're going to use her the post route. So they say, oh, we're going to use the post route. Watch, I can playmaker Devontae Adams up into the left. And you see that he is now going to go to a completely different spot on the field. Now, I do, un do understand that he is where he is. The reason that matters and the reason that that is important is because if they run zone and they are underneath a hook, they're underneath a hitch. So like right here, he's going to be underneath the hitch. All I have to do is playmaker it up. And you see he's going to come wide open. Um, I could play Baker him to the right and up. I could play Maker him to the left and up. It doesn't it doesn't really matter. Um, the point is I can play Maker him wherever I want him to go. And the reason that that is significant is because it's going to allow a lot of openings for your offense when the defense is in max protection. So when the defense is max max covering, then I can just fade him up, you know, or fade him another direction, and he's going to be able to be playmaker open. Now, part of this is you do need to understand if they're running cover two sync, as you saw right there, then the hook curl is going to go. Most people aren't going to be doing that. Most people are going to be doing um, the following. They're going to play Tampa two, and more than likely, you're not going to see a lot of match coverage because match coverage just really isn't that good of a look. So what's going to happen is they're going to run something like this. So you do this right here. And now look, if I play maker Devontae Adams up, you'll see – it's an absolute dot against cover two. If I have time in the pocket and I can playmaker that route, I can playmaker it anywhere I want. I can put it up. I can playmaker it wherever. You'll see the same is true on the right side of the field. So if I wanted to playmaker um, Marquez Valdez Scantling, literally all I have to do here, you'll see this route is going to probably be even better than the other route. But they have to run vertical hooks, and that's what's so powerful about this. Um, the fact that they have to run vertical hooks you know, really does change things. You see that that right there was cover three, shade coverage down. You see the hook curl is going to get out of the way. The hook curl will not sit on top of that route, which allows you a lot of opportunity for your hitches because they're going to have to play a very specific coverage. And even if the hook curl does do that, again, just playmaker him up. And playmaker doesn't work as good in practice mode as it does in the real game. But you see with the playmakering up of the hitch route, there's a void because people are they're, the user is going to be running all over the field. Their user is not going to be able to defend a post route and a hitch route. And so I'm going to show you that uh, in the next portion of this video. But again, it's a vertical hook, and it has to be a very specific, um, a very very specific setup. Now, what most people will do is they're going to put their their maybe their flats at 10 or 5, maybe uh, maybe they put their curl flats at 20 to 25, and then their hook curls they're going to put them at 5 or 10 yards. Um, we're going to specifically focus in on the 5 to 10 yard or the 0 to 5 uh, hook curls for the rest of the video here and talk about this specifically as it pertains to the Tampa 2 defense. So if I'm going to come out in my shotgun spread, um, and my favorite, favorite play in the game this year is the play curl wheel. Now what you want to do, there's a very, very specific thing that you have to do. You want to have that hitch route, but remember, we want to have Lewis on the line of scrimmage. So if I motion him to the right, you see he's going to become a tight end. That's not really what we're looking for let's see if i motion him to the left here see does he go all the way he does go all the way over to the left side of the field um and so you know you could you could um let's see where else we can motion um you see here if i motion about a scantling to the left now it brings mercedes lewis on the field you see this right here see this right here this is really really important so now if i'm in tampa 2 those vertical hooks if they're shaded down it's a i mean it's an automatic dot like it's there's nothing really they can do because they've got to defend the route to lewis so what that then allows on the offensive side of things it allows very very simple reads for your quarterback because if they're if their zones are down then you're able to easily hit this route and then what's going to happen is you're going to be able to work your other route combinations in combination with this, like a zig, maybe a zig. It would be an example of one. Um, and so bringing this, bringing this little route in just a, a simple motion does so much for this route. So out of um, cover two, maybe they're going to cover three. And let me show you the cover three. So if they run cover three, again, those vert hooks are down. See how they go away from the, see how they go away from him? It has to be cover two. That's what they have to run. What that then allows you to do 
is it allows you to go into another play that I really, really like against the cover two, especially if they're trying to stop hitch routes, and that's the play from the spread wide flex. The receiver's already on the line of scrimmage, and the play we're going to be talking about is stick. These are all concepts that I've broken down in detail and in depth in my guide, but I just want to show you. So now we, we resorted to, we have to play a vertical hook. We cannot play any other coverage. And it has to be at a very specific depth. It has to be at a five yard depth. There's nothing else that you can do that's going to work. And so now what you're going to see is this route on the right side of the screen is going to torch the cover two defense. So they're really kind of left like scratching their head. What do I call? Because I can't stop the stick route and watch. See how he's going to hold on the stick route and you can hit that. See how you can hit that route to Jones like quick. This is what makes hitches so powerful they are very versatile routes that you can use so like for example i could motion shepherd to the left here and now i've got both receivers i've got hitch on i've got stick on both sides so if i if they if i see that they're taking away the, the hitch route then i can literally run any route on the left side of the field is going to be open right maybe i maybe i do a smart route and in route maybe i do something like this right here maybe this is my setup Watch. Oh, they're underneath the hitch, which means I know I'm going to have this route in behind it. These are route combinations that can really, uh, really, really help you be successful. Because if those vertical hooks, if those vertical hooks are shaded over top and they're not at that five yard mark, what you'll find is you could low ball them as long as your receiver's on the line of scrimmage. So this is a full tutorial on hitch routes. Guys, hitch routes are really really good i did want to do one other quick um quick touch point on this what if they run like let's say they run like cover four you see that when they drop linemen they're dropping them into a vertical hook type of scenario you see this right here so if i drop my if i drop my defensive lineman pierre paul or barrett they're going into vertical hooks i want to show you how that affects hitch routes you'll see here see how he's going to sit right in front of it so that's an, another example where if you just if you just playmaker them, where you could basically playmaker them open wherever you want them to go. If you want them to go to the right or the left or whatever. Um, so there's just a lot that they have to do to stop the, these plays in combination with one another. Um, as well as let's say, let's say they do something like this right here where they do a three rec. Does a three rec hook curl stop it? Um, I'm going to show you real quick. So three rec. Uh, hook curl you see is going to man up on the running back most of the time most of the time it's not really going to sit with that i'm going to grab um i'm going to grab one other coverage real quick before we take off also if you haven't texted in um shoot me a text message with any matic questions you have or if you want to i release a tip every single week to my text message members so if you text me i will be releasing a video every single week it's just one video a week it's the tip of the week and i will be sending that to you via the text message you can only get it through text message so be sure to text me so that you can get access to that video all right so last thing i wanted to talk about was the cover six so three rack hooks um, out of defensive coverages like the cover six or even the cover three cloud um, maybe the cross fire uh, strong eagle slant all these different coverages and i wanted to primarily focus on the cover six so i'm going to run the place y stick and what you're going to see is the hook zones. You see, we've got a vertical hook on that right side of the screen. Let me go to like the crossfire. You see here, crossfire, you got that three rec hook right there. So you got a three rec hook and watch. See how the zone, see, see that, see that, see where that zone goes. Now that's a five yard three rec hook zone. Okay. Um, and what you'll see with that is you can actually. If I'm a, if I'm the quarterback, right? Snap of the ball. Oh, throw it. And you see you see that when they shade that coverage down, that's going to take that away. But what it allows for your offense is incredible, incredible opportunity for your offense. You can hit that quick route to the back very very easily. That quick, in fact, that quick route to the back is going to open up tenfold because you're forcing your opponent to pay to play five yard hook curls. Five yard hook curls. That's the only way they stop stick. And if they play five yard hook curls, well, look out over the top. These in routes are going to work wonders for you. So 
that is everything that I know about hitches right now. Make sure you run, run them on the line of scrimmage and make sure that you leverage them. Now, if there's a receiver, I do want to t- tell you this right now. If there's a corner in front, you see, sometimes I'll tr- sometimes you might try to high point them. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, it just doesn't work um, as well as I'd hoped it would work this year. Um, a much better approach would just be to playmaker him up. And then when he goes up, just hit him. It's very, very simple, but it works. And so that is just a simple concept. Um, but simple things work well. And I would just encourage you. There's a very, very specific zone that they have to run to stop this route. They can't really run anything else. And so because of that, it's going to open up windows. When you can understand zig routes and hitch routes, flat routes, quick, quick routes, it makes your offense better. So I hope this helped you. We've got our live stream coming here in a few short hours. So make sure you're subscribed to us on YouTube or you follow me on Twitch. Links for both of those are in the description of this video. Make sure you text in so you can get your free tip of the week. And last but not least, if you haven't picked up the Arizona offensive ebook yet, you can pick it up in the description. It's my Madden 21 competitors bundle. We got both playbooks jointed together for over a hundred pages of material on how to take your Madden game to the next level. Thank you for your time, guys.